I feel a lot more, I don't know, rewarded. This um, island was off limits until I think 89. We've got three points of security, two back here and one with the primary anchor. Continuing our series on sailing the coast of Croatia, we take you on a trip around the island of Viz, standing alone farther out in the Adriatic Sea. We headed first to the western harbor of Komiza, with a little help from some friends. All right. Yeah? It's one guy by himself. And comes another one. Ooh, a little baby one. A little baby. Yeah. A little junior. That's <laughs> so cool oh, when they jump together so like great. that. So we're in the town of Comiza. It's beyond that breakwater over there. We're uh, on a buoy just outside of it. And the town is lovely. We walked all through it this afternoon. It's um, historic. There have been fishing fleets here for centuries. Um, Civilization has been on this island for many a century, thousands and thousands of years. The sky is pretty dramatic tonight. We're supposed to get um, a thunderstorm and some other, you know, fun uh, natural activities, but very dramatic. The cliffs are beautiful. Uh, we're out of the land of low, flat-lying islands, and I can tell that I feel a lot more, I don't know, rewarded. Uh, by seeing lands that are dramatic like this, that climb out of the sea and that are uh, that go to great heights. Um, this area up here is just stunning. You can see there's some huge hole on the top of that hill that is uh, probably limestone and eroded over years. Um, just pretty cool. Uh, so, yep, Comiza on the island of uh, Vis, so Otak Vis. Hopefully tomorrow we will walk up to, um, let's see if I can see it, this cathedral up in there. We started walking there today and it was just very hot, so we gave up. And my husband is back here chopping fruit and salami. So here we go. We are crossing uh along the southern side of Vis in Croatia and I uh, wanted to show you what some of the terrain looks like. It's pretty cool. So we came from around this point in a little uh, harbor called Kozima and um, this is the rugged coastline of the southern part of Vis. You can see great big slabs of rock there that are broken off. Some, this is all kind of slanted up at a vertical, I mean at a steep angle going up there. Would be great snorkeling I'm sure. And further down there you can kind of see the angled rock coming down. There's all these um, day tripper boats too that are going along here so we're kind of curious as what, where they're going to, if they're going to the same anchorage we are on the south coast of Vis. There's also a green cave and a blue cave that are popular tourist destinations. Um, the blue cave is off of this neighboring island from Vis. You, there's a whole cluster of boats in sort of the middle of the coastline there and I believe that's where the blue cave is. We saw a great blue cave uh, on Capri so I think we're good with that um, but it seems to be quite the popular thing to do here and I'm suspecting the green cave is further down ahead of us so we will be learning a lot more about this coastline and um, we're one of the two boats right now sailing this other dark hole boat is kind of drifting along with us we got some really light winds from behind about um, seven eight knots of wind and uh, sails are mostly full a little bit of flapping around, but it's an okay pace. We don't have too far to go today. 
we're looking forward to getting there and doing maybe doing a little bit of a swim over there uh, and exploring around. Uh, the cove that we're aiming for has a lot of tourist boats that come during the day and then they depart uh, late in the day so uh, we'll be hunting around to try to find a place to anchor in and amongst all those boats. So this is Island of Vis. Uh, it used to be um, a uh, Tito's stronghold. Uh, the partisans that were fighting against the, what I assume were uh, Nazi and Mussolini uh, personnel on the mainland of Croatia during World War II. And then Brit and they were working with British Special Operations Forces here too. So this um, island was off limits until I think 89 and uh, you weren't able to come within like a couple hundred meters of the coastline. And now it's open for visitors like us and tourism has rapidly been taking force with judging from all the boats going crisscrossing and how busy the harbor was last night. All the mooring balls were full. We counted probably 80 mooring balls and maybe 20 spaces on the dock and they were all full. So quite a popular spot. You can see why um, a lot of natural beauty here and um, together with the history uh, World War II and um, there are some places around the island where there are some holes cut into the cliffs where they would, um, I, as I understand it, put in submarines or patrol boats there and hide them and perhaps do some bunkering, uh, fuel bunkering there too. So, some great history and we're looking forward to discovering more of it. With plenty of daylight and not far to go, we spent extra time looking for the perfect overnight spot. And through this, you'll get a glimpse of the decision making we use to select the perfect anchorage. So we're along the south coast of Viz and we're checking out some anchoring spots for tonight. There are all these little inlets. This one's like a one boat spot here. We kind of took in, drove in through the harbor here, a little cove to see if what it's like as far as depth. It could work, we'd have to take a line, a certain line to shore, um, but very cool. It's got a little like pool around the corner to the left there. It's a lone fisherman out here on the point. No idea how he got there. Uh, hiked in maybe, there might be a trail up there. But very cool, there's all of these along here. And we've got three or four more that we could check out and come back here if this one seems like the best option. A lot of wind erosion up on the cliff face there too and all these little holes in the cliff that from erosion and then over here is more of that layering that's like cracking off falling into the ocean all the way up there it's really great so this is definitely high on my list um, we could bring the dinghy around and we could snorkel into some of these coves paddleboard over in the morning if it's calm enough. And then further down here, it looks like the uh, geography kind of levels out a little bit. It's not quite so steep, at least right along the shore. Um, but that doesn't mean it couldn't be cool anchorage. So we're going to continue motoring on down there and see what we find. This is really, really neat. I know we're both loving the fact that this is more rocky and steep and mountainous terrain than what we had up in uh, further up north in Croatia, in Kornati and north there. Uh, not to diminish the beauty of those places, but after a while when you're looking at kind of low-lying islands and particularly the barrenness of Kornati, it's really great to come and see this topography here. With all these uh, cliffs dropping in the sea and making big caverns and uh, wind carved cliff edges and all that. Be awesome to explore in the dinghy and possibly snorkel through here. So this reminds me a lot of Corsica and a little bit of Majorca. And uh, um, we are looking forward to learning more about it. All right, we're continuing to hunt for a place for anchoring tonight. This is Uvala Talesca on the south coast of Viz. And um, now these places are really marked on the chart as an anchored spot and they're not in Navali and other apps. So we're kind of on our own, on our own wits about this. 
And what we find works best is to have one person, um, obviously one person at the helm, they can see the chart and they can call out depths and then have somebody like what I'm doing up here in the bow um, to your, you know, 40 feet ahead of the person at the helm so you get an earlier view of what's going on. And you get a really good perspective being up here high and be able to look right down in the water to see what the condition of the water is like. Is there sand to anchor in? Are there rocks coming up? Um, it's hard to really get that perspective on the spatial perspective when you're at the helm underneath the bimini and all that. And um, so that's what we're doing here. So the combination of the two rolls really works well, what we find. So what I'm looking for here is, um, you know, obviously I have enough space to um, anchor and um, pull back and set the anchor without getting too close to shore. Okay, and Karen just called out the depth of 15, so she's occasionally calling up the depth, so I know even though when I look down here it's all just dark blue, so I can't tell the depth. Um, and dark blue could be sand way down there deep, um, but I'm really looking for a light green color. There might be a little bit over here that's sand. Um, a very, very light green over there means shallow and rocky. So um, this is going to be hard to judge right now. I still can't see. She called out 15. I can see a little bit of lighter blue over there than the darker blue. So that could be sand over there that we can anchor in. So we're looking spatially to see if we have enough space to drop the anchor, motor back on it and set it. And then in a small cove like this, we're definitely going to run a line to shore. So we're looking for where we can attach a line. 15 is what she called out. Okay. Um, and uh, like a tree works really well, but there's no trees close to shore, so other than that it would be a rock that I could... All right, okay. I still don't, I see a little bit of the bottom here, but it's really dark. Uh, right up here, it's starting to be a little bit of sand potential. Yeah, there's an inflatable back in there. And a building coming up. Um, so apart from that, a rock to uh, wrap a stern line around, we, we would take a chain, a short piece of chain to go around the rock itself and then tie the stern line. All right, stern line to that chain so that the chain doesn't abrade and get cut off. So she's calling out depths of seven, eights, and sevens. That's all good anchoring depth. But down in here, it looks to me like um, either weed, definitely weeds over here and possibly sort of um, mix of rock and sand maybe sand it looks like that dirt sort of dark sand color that could be rock oh, yeah. flat rock with a little bit of light yeah. sand and i guess we could look at that sand piece right there right the sand right behind you yeah, yeah. I'd like to look at it with, um, yeah so another option we do is we launch the dinghy and we get our portable depth sounder and we go out and measure depth so we know uh what we're faced without having to risk the big boat being in there Okay, so we're gonna pass on this one or at least move on. It didn't look like there was good uh, place for sand for the anchor to dig into. It was too dark and darkness usually means weeds and anchors some hold too well in weeds. Um, it could work, but I have a feeling we'll find better. If not the previous anchorage, um, perhaps one of the ones coming up. So we'll continue our hunt. We'll see what we find. Uh, sometimes you don't have a choice and you got to just sort of just take what's there and deal with all the crowdedness of that anchorage or uh, the poor holding ground of it or whatever. But um, we've definitely got some good options here. And we don't have any onshore winds uh, coming out of, uh, I guess this would be sort of the southwest. Um, it's pretty mild today. So this would be a very exposed coastline. It goes right out. This is facing the Adriatic. So you got the whole fetch all the way over from Italy and um, it would be really rough along this southern part of Viz if that was the case. But we've got very mild winds, so we're fortunate that we get to kind of be picky about our anchorage for tonight. All right, checking this spot out. This has sort of like a little hook to the left and a hook to the right to anchor in. This powerboat's right in the middle, interesting enough. This is a lot deeper in, which would give us better protection from any way, uh, wind and waves that might come up. All right, 22 meters. Not, 
Yeah, no, you wouldn't think so. So Karen was saying that with 22 meters here, where they are anchored, they probably don't have a lot of scope out. So that's a risk. Is another thing to consider when you're anchoring is what the people around you are like and whether they are anchored sufficiently to cause, allow you to relax and not worry about them dragging on you. Unfortunately, the perfect anchorage is placed all by yourself without a risk of somebody else dragging on you. Yeah, I mean, it looks more green on the right, like better sand. It's definitely shallower over there. Okay. But I, with them where they are, I don't know how, what else we would be able to do. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. So given the, uh, even though the, the cove's deep in here, um, where this powerboat is, it's probably kind of makes it hard for us to go either side of them. I actually think the other cove would be better than, than this one, the one we were just at. Partly because nobody's there yet. Yeah, sure. So we're gonna move on further uh, east along the, the southern coast here. And the next couple anchors are supposed to be uh, a little more popular, so we may run into more boats and uh, might not even really have enough room to anchor anyway. So or we're going to check it out and see what a popular anchorage around here looks like. All right, this is the popular anchorage and there's boats coming and boats going and people anchoring in too deep of water. A couple morning balls all the way in there and it looks like actually a cool swimming area with ca uh, caves and all that, but it's way too crowded. And if you're not on a mooring ball in there, you have to anchor really deep. This orange boat is anchoring in like 20 meters of water. There's no room. There's no room for 60 meters of line, let alone 80 meters of line out. So we're going to move on. We saw it. We navigated through it. Yep. Pulse rate is coming not down. All the way through it, but... When we came in here, there was like three boats heading out. So it's a constant procession of boats coming and going. Yeah, there's two more, and then there's the place we had talked about going, which has sort of two sides to it. So we could check out those. They, none of them look terribly shallow for anchoring. Yeah, terribly good for like you know nice shallow depths for anchoring, but stern to the shore maybe the only option. All right, we are continuing on our search for an anchorage. Anchor rodeo here. It's like every quarter mile there's another little option. There's this spot here which has nobody in it right now. And then this spot that we're coming into that we can see two sailboats, monohull and a big catamaran in there. And what looks like a nice vineyard up ahead, up above on the hillside. So we'll see what this, uh, what we got going on here. Whether we got uh, good shallow depths enough for anchoring and enough swing room or an option to take a stern line ashore. July in Croatia. Boats, boats, and boats. Boats and floats to watch out for. So there may be mooring balls in here. I can't tell yet. I see two white things floating there. There could be more of these uh, fish trap buoys, or they could be actually be a mooring ball. They don't look like terribly good buoys. If I were to guess, I'd say they're both anchored. Actually, no. The, this first white boat's got to be on a mooring. Their anchors up on their roller. Yeah, with the swimmers, I would try to back out. As you can see, one of the challenges in a crowded anchorage is maneuvering safely around other boats, swimmers, and their water toys. 
We take it real slow, and if there's no room to turn around, we carefully back out, keeping a close eye astern for anything in the water, as Karen is doing here. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I don't I didn't remember anything on Navali about moorings here and what they who manages them with their restaurant or you just pay some random person comes by or whatever. You probably sense my reluctance to pick up the mooring ball. Given the choice, I'd rather anchor than use someone else's random mooring where you don't know the quality and strength of the gear or whether they will show up later and ask you to leave. Sometimes you don't have a choice in a crowded anchorage, and as Karen mentioned, one option is to dive on it and check the quality for yourself. We're now getting to the place that we originally put in a waypoint on our chart plotter to go to, uh, the kind of furthest option down the coast here in Viz, that's still protected from the east where we're supposed to get some winds coming up, not too high winds, but some winds overnight. So. Um, this will be the last option we'll look at and then we'll decide from there. And we've got another sailboat coming in here at high speed and Karen throttled up as well. So, looks like we're uh, both fighting. You see the, the trap right in front of you? Go left. Yep, there you go. Yep. So on this left side, there's several boats already in here. It looks like some of them are stern tied to the shore, perhaps all of them. I'm going to go in there and check this out. We run into this quite often where, okay, this guy's boat over here, he's definitely full throttling and over here as well. And uh, last night we were coming into the mooring field at Comiza, there was a boat that zipped right in front of us and grabbed the last mooring on one side of the anchorage. It's like uh, very competitive <laughs> here to get into spots and not terribly courteous sometimes. Okay, it looks like they've slowed down a little bit, which is good. Because when you get into these spots, even though it seems like there's a lot of room, when you're trying to circle around and check for depths and all that, it's really hard to be also looking for another boat coming in and trying to... This is pretty exposed from the east. Do you want to come back and look at it? Sure. Yeah. So we're headed north. It's not too bad though. Um, I mean, it's a whole lot more crowded, unfortunately. So that kind of speaks to the one on the right, but... Yeah, but we don't know why no one's there. Yeah. It's impossible to anchor, maybe rocky. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think if we can find a place in here, I'm okay with that. Okay. Or we go back to the one that was there were no boats in previously. Uh -huh. So... Yeah, straight ahead's an option. Uh, even possibly around to the left, I can't tell yet. So all these boats have at least one line to shore, and that uh, catamaran's moving. Okay. So that's another option. Well, that would be great to go in there. Yeah. Or they're setting. I can't quite tell. Right here in between? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to have to put the camera down and uh, get ready to anchor. Yeah, they've got swimmers in the water, so I don't think they're, they're leaving. All right, we are all anchored. We ended up deciding on the farthest anchorage along the southern part of Viz. So there's sort of a two-part piece to this anchorage, this part here, and then there's another spot around the corner. Oddly enough, even though that spot around the corner looked great, uh, nobody was there, and there was like a rocky beach there, and 
and everybody was in this side so you know we kind of did the herd mentality and uh, came where all the other boats are so we're settling here there's a catamaran there and a couple other monohulls here and a little settlement a couple houses and a rocky beach typical rocky beach of Croatia so we came in here and we found what was the best sort of kind of sandy area we could locate. We ended up getting into some sort of like darker areas, which ended up, when it's, I just swam on the anchor and it was kind of like dead weeds. So there would have been a weedy area and this would have been weeds that washed away from that and settled on the sand. And our anchors dug in, in through those weeds. So it's not perfect, but the anchor's buried, I can't see it. And I feel pretty good about that. So I still need to put the snubber on, uh, but we, we lowered the anchor. We backed down on it to make sure it was set. Uh, and Karen and Karen kept the engine at about 2,000, 2,500 RPMs, which um, forced us back close to the shore here. And similar to what these boats have done over here, where they run lines ashore, multiple lines if possible, we've run two lines. So um, I went and took the dinghy over to the rock out there. We have two short lengths of chain. They're about five, six feet long um, with shackles on the end. So I wrapped the chain around a sort of a uh, pointy part of the rock. And then I tied our stern line to that with a bowline and then brought that line, is brought back to our cleat here. And then just to have more security, we ran a second line over there. There's a little nub of a rock there Again, a little bit of chain around that, and then the stern line over to this cleat. So we've got three points of security, two back here and one with the primary anchor. So kind of similar to how you, when you triangulate your position in navigation, you get a really good fix. When you're triangulated in your anchorage, you get a really secure spot. So we shouldn't move a whole lot here. We might swing a little bit. Um, this line's a little bit slack right now, so we might get some motion, but not a whole lot. Um, this is really the best way to go stern, eight, stern two. Sometimes you only have the option of one run, one line, or you just don't have time to do two, and that's fine. You just swing a little bit more. But if you can, can get two lines on, that's really secure and holds you really solid in your spot. We're supposed to get some east winds tonight. Uh, we had some strong winds in sort of around 1 to 2 a.m. last night or early this morning and um, in our morning field and we may get something like that. We had about 25 to close to 30 knots briefly. Um, so we're set up here really well though. We're on our own equipment so it's nice rather than being on a mooring and, and when you're in a mooring field you're tightly around a lot of other boats that you got to trust or have faith in their mooring lines and their ability to secure their boats. So we feel a lot better here and uh, we're going to enjoy this spot for the night. Awesome, awesome location here in Croatia. I hope you enjoyed that explanation of how we select an anchorage and how we communicate between the helm and foredeck. Unfortunately, not long after getting settled into Uvala Ruda, we had a bit of a medical emergency develop, with me losing sight in my left eye. We hastily raised anchor and motored away full speed to the city of Split, some eight hours away making it to the western tip of Brak to anchor before nightfall, only to be driven away by thunder and high winds. We motored away in zero visibility across the heavily trafficked ship channel before finding another cove to hide in at 2 a.m. At daybreak, we went back to retrieve our stern line and motored full tilt to split, finding a miraculously protected anchorage near the city where I found a wonderfully competent eye doctor who diagnosed me with PVD, posterior vitreous detachment, a condition common for older adults and one that can be easily managed. I hope you've enjoyed this third video in our multi-part series of Sailing the Coast of Croatia. In the next segment, we will continue sailing north of Split, enjoying the company of more friends as we immerse ourselves in the changing landscape of this stunning Mediterranean country. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to be notified of our upcoming releases. Fair winds.